good morning, good evening, good day. So we now have lunchtime, lunchtime with uh, a session. That's a perfect thing. Hopefully you have the time to get a cup of coffee or something. So I have presented this session uh, five minutes before the last hour in a German version. And now we have the English version. That's OK. I have to look lots of stuff. Uh, you think, OK, thinking is not so the, the thing what you need. But uh, yes, we can have it like you see here on the phone. But first we have to start all this stuff and we see the SharePoint conference will start next year. So the date of the collaboration conference will come and in 21. So that's an information you have to look. 2030 to 25th of March in next year in Las Vegas. And you see, without any sponsors, you do not have any chance to make this event happen. Thank you so much to the sponsors, and that's okay. And that means, yeah, we, we, we have to use these things, but uh, if you take the raffle and look for that, then you have the chance to, to win something, And but you have to end the, the raffles in there, the answers in the raffle, okay. Three Oculus quests we will have. And uh, for the money that we have from the sponsors and so on, the people has to say, okay, we give the money back to all charity refunds and so on. Uh, that's the things we have to say. It's okay that we have to do that because it's a community thing and a community we will talk to the people and we give our knowledge back to the people and therefore we start. So I have a black or dark mode slide stack. So where I am, I'm Hans Brander. I'm coming from Germany. I'm MVP since seven years. So now I, I told me as an IT influencer or a cloud productivity evangelist, IT influencer is not known so far, but okay, you find me with an email. Yes, I still send all these information coming into my email because in teams, in so many teams, what we have as a cloud productivity, you find all the emails and all the notification from other things like Twitter and LinkedIn and so on inside uh, my Outlook. So the first thing in the morning, I have to delete a lot of stuff, but I never see, oh, that's important. I have to look for that. I do not forget this stuff. So do you find me in LinkedIn also? Oh, main, yes. Follow me on Twitter with all the new knowledges that I have to prepare for you. You can also do it in Facebook or in Xing or in Instagram. But uh, Instagram is for young people and I'm maybe retired, but you will see that what's going on with this function. So the next uh, 50 minutes I have to talk a lot. I have to talk about SharePoint storage. I will talk about versioning. Yes, I will talk about run files on demand and I'll talk about request files. Who oh, never heard that? And I will attend also to the other sessions. So yes, you have lost the German version. Now I have the English version here and another English version at five o'clock p.m. Central European time. Then you find me also on mile nine, the OneDrive crew policies that only, not only for the enterprise. The two other sessions are in German. So if you do not understand German, that's not so good, but we have to see, but you have to say, okay, I can tell them that's interesting or not interesting. So in the group policies, I only make some slides and then it's okay for that one. Going into the past, we have several symbols in the notification area. Yeah, in a smaller environment, not so big. The white symbol, the dark blue, and the white, the warmer blue. So yes, the dark blue was only available, and some people still have SharePoint on premise before 2019. Why? Before? Yes, 2016 and all the other SharePoint, you still may have the symbol if you are synchronize things up. That's the old groove client. And right on the right side, you find the OneDrive next generation sync client with personal. And on the left, yeah, Microsoft decided to take it in a warmer blue. And now we have the blue. It's not green, it's not red. That's the next generation sync client, sync client data from the tenant document libraries, wherever you sync this stuff. And that's the difference. SharePoint on-premise before 2019, OneDrive personal. So what has happened? Now we have the new symbols and the new symbols are okay. If you are starting with your Explorer, you still have blue and blue and not white. 
If you look inside your notification error, it's white. So therefore you have to look about that. That's still available. If you have the old symbol, then you know that's the proof client. That's the old client you have to use. Thinking in different direction means yes, you can sync and sync and sync, and there are so many possibilities to sync. Therefore, you see this stuff. The OneDrive Personal is one of them. OneDrive for Business, I will take a lot, a shared with me the things. The most question came in my blog about shared with me. So, document libraries, wherever you have document libraries, synchronization with more than one tenant. And then the king discipline, business to business synchronization. You have to see that. But listen, that's easy. There is only, sometimes people know, hey, how many things we have in, um, let's say, synchronization, how many one drive may I have? So there is a number, like the film, there is only one, Highlander. One, only one, and that means, okay, you can have, but you can have more than one on personal, but you cannot sync. Syncing is only available for one OneDrive personal. And then we switch over to OneDrive for business. You switch over to a tenant. Oh, in Office 365, that's complicated. And I look, if I click on OneDrive, it opens OneDrive for business. You don't know that. There's only the listening OneDrive. So I talk to the OneDrive group and I say, why is it so complicated that you do not write it over OneDrive for business? Newcomer does not see, they only see OneDrive. And OneDrive and OneDrive personal or OneDrive consumer, people do not know that. OneDrive for business is your more storage enhancement of your device. Enhancement. You can synchronize the data. You have it if you have a tenant in this right way. That's OneDrive for business. We have to look for that later on. But sometimes you also have to say, okay, I want to share or uh, somebody, people, I want to share data for my OneDrive for business. And you know, the first thing is they get the data, they got the email with a link, they click on it, the browser will open and you see the data. And you can change the data and open Word for online or something. That's okay. But you are not ready today. Tomorrow will open. You have to search again. Okay, where is the email? Oh, there's an email. You have to connect again. Share it with me and you can work in the browser. Why could I not sync this data directly? Because I want to work with this guy on this part. I want to work with this data on my device as a receiver. Hey, cool, that works. But it works only if you have a folder synchronized with the other part. And if you only want to have one Word document, for example, you should not sync the Word document to the other part. You should only have the folder. Make a folder, whatever the name you have, the folder, put this file in and then share the folder and all the data can sync by the other part. So showing you, user A, that's me. I will share it with you, you are user B. So I will share the information and it's one drive for business, this part. So it will synchronize my data from my laptop to the one drive for business and I have it. I say, I will share it with user B, it's okay, but it will take the, not only the file, I will take the the folder and share the folder with user B. So listen, then user B can say, okay, I select user B and I say, synchronize this stuff and it will sync in user B's environment and this device, he has for, uh, to press the button and will synchronize the data and he has to possibility. That means not only one data, not only one file you can have in this folder, other folders are a lot of data, any there, and you can share it with user B. Share it with me. And it looks like that one. You see here in my environment, Julian Fusuch has done that and has shared this document library. He is inside this tenant, and you see here the files, I'm on files on demand. Yeah, it takes no space with me, but I can have this stuff inside my device. So that's a critical things. So synchronize with tenant, team sites, and so on. You have some team sites. You know, the old 
team sites, you have to press the three stars and you have to say, oh, no, I want to sync this data. Now you can do it inside, inside files, inside your teams. That's easy. You can have it more than once. You can also have some groups and document libraries wherever you want to have these document libraries. That's OK, and I push it all. That is OK with Shared With Me, with OneDrive for Business and with OneDrive Personal. Listen, that's the complete stuff. It could be more complicated, but that you have to say one OneDrive and up to nine tenants. We, we see that in a, a few seconds. So therefore you can see that. And if you see that, then it's interesting. How does it work? It's one engine and you can have with one engine in different instances, all these stuff. Yeah, mm, I have to look for that. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, with one or more than one tenant. Yeah, how many tenants you could have? Nine. Nine tenants and one one drive personal. So therefore, up to ten different synchronization. And in the English version, I have the one drive group policy. With two policies, you can decide. Hey, I do not want to have the one drive personal or consumer. One drive personal. Uh, you cannot control the data there in. That means in your OneDrive for Business and all these document libraries, you can control the data via group policies. And therefore, it's interesting to make it happen that you see this stuff. So now we want to have it with a second tenant. So I'm a consultant. I come to companies and people say, OK, we, can, we should work together. And therefore, they say, OK, we give you a license. I don't have office twice because I'm on tenant A, but this is on tenant B. But I can have it. That's the second one. Absolute different. Absolute. I have to sync the data. I have to get my credentials for that and here for that too. So therefore you can have it. But you have to listen. So I was in a bank and I have uh, in Hamburg three years ago and I have this this site here open. He says, oh, that's interesting. Stay, stay. We have to look for that. And the IT partners came in and have to say, what's what's it there? Oh, he understand. Tenant A was a bank here in Germany. Tenant B was a bank in New York. That's a subsidiary from them. But they have to store the data for the bank things. If they do it on the Wall Street, they have to store it in Tenant B. Because this location was in US. And tenant E was in Germany, but in Germany, the people are also allowed to do in something in the other things, but they have to store the documents in the right tenant. So therefore, that was the solution for them. Synchronize with more than one tenant. Yeah, it's possible to can do that. But the king discipline is business to business synchronization. Listen, this is tenant customer. That's me. That's my end. I think I can share with me. I can share with OneDrive for Business, have all these stuff here and synchronize this stuff. I'm synchronizing with some document library in there. Perfect. But I'm a marketing guy, but uh, sometimes the marketing people has to say, OK, we have to do it with an outside organization. And I say to the people, OK, you can make the websites and all these parts, what you ever want. So I call this tenant marketing, whatever the company name is. And I say, OK, I sent them a link to an Excel sheet. I do not send an Excel sheet directly. On the Excel sheet, they have to say, OK, all persons you want to have synchronized data on her machines from us, you have to give me the name and you have to give me the email address. And that fills it out five, eight, ten people, whatever you want. And I now do at the tenant administrator go to Azure and there take it as an invite role. That's a new role or as an admin role uh, to say OK with a PowerShell command and invite the complete people. So they make trust the tenant customer to the tenant marketing. Trust means the people got some mails at the beginning, but if they say yes, yes, yeah, with a picture of the administrator, that's me. Yeah, okay, we will trust them, and they never think have to sync the data here from this marketing document library. So that means I and other person inside the tenant customer are allowed to work with this marketing document library, but if they're safe something in there, it's all those safe 
to the people we have invited to their machine if they have to sync the data. That's a perfect thing, but you can make it a little bit more complicated. That's the second one. Yeah? Uh, tenant procurement, that it's also, you see, hey, other company name, he has to be in Office 365. Yes, you cannot use MFA here in this customer because business to business or cross tenant migration does not understand right now MFA. But anyway, we can see that, that we can work with these companies and I don't need a license and nothing. There's a trust between tenant marketing and tenant customer. And there's another trust between tenant procurement and tenant customer. Perfect way to work with that. But again, we have to display, hey, what is working there? On the left side, you find your Windows 10 device with a hard disk, a small hard disk, because we're now looking for all this stuff. The SharePoint sites with document library. And you know, yesterday we talked about lists. No, not me. That was uh, the people. It was Omar Sharin uh, in the keynote together with uh, Jeff Tipa. He talked about the list and all these stuff. Um, but that's all SharePoint. But we also talk about or only talk about document libraries in SharePoints or document libraries for OneDrive for Business, for this user or for the next user or whatever, or for Teams. Teams are stored, the documents, the files for the Teams are in SharePoint behind the scene. That is the thing behind the scene. If I will make a channel, a private channel, it's stored in OneDrive for Business. Okay, we have it here. So therefore you have to know where all these data are there to sync the data to your local machine. So I have to look for this one. One moment to look if something will come here to see that, but uh, there is nothing there. It's okay. Show conversation. Right. Okay. And question and answers. No one. Perfect. So continue with this stuff. Okay. Means we have to look how does it work with these SharePoint. With OneDrive, your local device will expand your local storage. It makes a small machine to a bigger machine, thinking what we are doing. You have three storage space in SharePoint Online. That means one terabyte for the tenant and 10 gigabyte for each user, for all sites and all document libraries. And additional one terabyte up to five terabyte. It depends on the license you have. It reads five terabyte and more for each user. So how does it look like? We have to look. Now it looks like Dropbox Box and other cloud storage components, but it's not the same. You have to look and therefore we have to look for this SharePoint house. So the SharePoint house you see, that's a normal house and you have an administrator. The administrator is a facility manager. He can walk up and down. He can go inside the different rooms. If you have this stuff in SharePoint on premise, then you have to look for that because uh, that's inside your and if you have more than one SharePoint server on premise it we called that or Microsoft called it SharePoint farm. So for me that's the SharePoint house. Listen there is also some possibilities in there. What that here? That's the one try for business. Each of these small things are one try for business for each user. So now you can count how many users I have but anyway that's one terabyte for each user. And therefore, I put it all in the house. That's here are document libraries. So you see here some document libraries here for marketing. And I have one key. It's a yellow key. The administrator have to talk to me. In a real house, you have all of the possibilities. Only one has the key. He has a contract. The other persons who are able to view or modify or change data, they have different keys. So that's a different one. Huh? You can have this although here. I can have to share my data with other persons. But listen, why should I do not so many things there? The problem is if I left the company, these data are eliminated after a period of time.
and the people has to say, OK, it's not so good. That means if you have an idea, you can change all this stuff. That's a perfect way. But later on, you should do and take the move command, not the copy command. Take the move command and put it here in another library where you have, where I have the yellow key and the other persons have the red key. Now I can leave the company. That's gone. But here only the yellow key man is gone. That maybe is another pair of people can change the role to the yellow man and have the contract now. You understand? So that's a different one between OneDrive for business. You can change. That's your local stuff on your machine and has nothing to do with OneDrive personal. That's a different one. So we have different libraries, librarians finance, librarians ideas in the group policy thing. I will show you a little bit about uh, what we can do if people came to our company and I'm as an administrator, I have to say, OK, where are you working? Oh, he's working in finance, so I can also admit him. His device automatically will be connected to the different library, this library finance. And other people, oh, marketing, yes, I can absolutely connect him directly and she should not, I have not do anything else. It is automatically synchronized, but it's still not on his machine. Later on, I will show you what's there. So means, yes, we have all this data and you see the free storage has been uh, expanded more and more in 2016 last time in 2018 and uh, why do they do that you see that i have here on the left side that's my file explorer with three documents from office if you save something it will be saved in the cloud if you change something on this file you will have a different version so that means you have all the versions here and here for the second file and for the third file and so on. So I have versions here, standards, we have up to 500, you can expand more, but that's a standardization. And this one I show you here, that's a version history of a file I daily modify. So that means, yes, I have 500 modifications and I show you that will also happen on different states. Mean not only in the browser. Listen, the, the thing about version history, that's our metadata, that's the old version. You can go back, you can differentiate it. And the first thing is you have different possibilities to share it or to, to search it. Where is it? The first thing we have it in the past, you have to go to the web browser, go to the library, and then you have to press the three points and then you see the version history. Perfect. But there are more. Absolutely new one is the version history in the file explorer. So in the file explorer, you only have the latest version, but you have the chance to select the files and say, I need version history. Perfect. Then you can see the different version and then you can say, OK, I will download or something else. Uh, but I can do download and make it available and so on. Now that is a version that we look inside the same thing uh, on the SharePoint server and look for the data. But that's not all. We can have it also in your OneDrive client. If you click the button and take it and you see here are all the three points, uh, that means you click on the three points of some synchronized data. That's the last one and click to open. No, we do not want to open. We do not want to share. We want to view it only, not only online. We want to see the version history. It's also available here, but that's not all. We have one more and if you open a file and this is a file, they have more than that. You see 21246. I have only this line each day, a new line. And that means that several data from my heart. That's the dates for I never have smoked a cigarette since 1246 days and other parts. So therefore, has nothing to do. If you click on the name and do you see it downstairs, yes, they can also have hit the version and then it opens a window with all the versions. This file has more, has exactly 500 new, 
500 versions means I can go 500 versions back and it works with Word and it works with Excel and works with PowerPoint. So the thing is, if you have a Word, you can display it side by side, the old version and the newest version. So you can decide, hey, I want to take, go some steps back with this file because I want to have to run something in the wrong direction. So therefore you can have all these version history. It's also very important if you decide, oh, we have to have a backup of all these files in the document libraries, thinking not only to ask the people to give you the different version and ask them, hey, do you also are available of versions? But most people only have the latest version. That's easy. But I know several backup solutions you will have also for the different versions here in there. So, OK, version history, that's done. How to compress the data? If I have a small disk and I have a lot of data, let's say petabytes we have to there. That's done with Windows 10 1709 and the function is files on demand. So we can have that and 1809, no, we have the possibility with storage sense. That's the settings that we can clear the data in a more sufficient way that you can see all the stuff. During the old days, before we have files on demand, we have all the data sync. That means at the initial sync period, the red line here, that was a sync because all data has to be not only synced, some of the content come with me, and then it take this way. Now, with files on demand, we only have the names there, but I will show you later on. 1709 or Mac OS. With Mojave, you can have all the same functionality. So we have some symbols in there. Means yeah, they have to it if NTFS. The FAT allocation table would be synchronized and we see that was. That is the cloud only. Means I have the name there, and I show it later. Uh, it's only in the cloud. You need internet connection to double click on the cloud, on this symbol, and then you see all the stuff means um, that we have the problem that we can see it, the name, but it's not the content there. Local available file, that's not, that's easy. That means it's there, you can open it, you can work with it. And always available, it's the same. What is the different? So thinking about the function with storage sense gives us the possibility, and I will show you that at five o'clock, although in English, or in three o'clock p.m. local time here in Central Europe, um, both in my, the, the one is, is in mile nine, the German one is in the German session with group policies, and I will show you how does it work. So if you have a file in this state, you can do it with your right mouse click. You will have always available files. Local available files could be cleaned and automatically changed to cloud only. So therefore it's a different one and you have to know that. So thinking, yes, if I have a file open and we're thinking that's a normal symbol that we have. So we do that in NTFS with two new attributes and we have to look for that. That's the admin control via GPO storage sense. You can have it also on your machine without a group policy, but it's a little bit, hey, I have to put a lot of stuff. But thinking first for the explanation, that's NTFS, a little bit simplified. You have a file name, you have a type. You have place for a picture. So if you have uh, some pictures and uh, you see, hey, that's possible to show you the picture in your Windows Explorer without any spaces occupied. We have the attributes, we have a pointer, we have other things like date creation, modified creation and so on, but that is simplified. You see, if you have a pointer, that gives a pointer to the content. Yes, I know that simplified, there's a pointer to the pointer to the pointer, but this first pointer shows you to the content means it's synchronized this state or this state. OK, OK, I have the content that makes if you have this state, it costs you storage on your local device. If you say right click and I want to have it only in the cloud, it's synchronized, then does it happen here? 
it's cloud only and you do not see any pointer to the content. This space, I go back, this space, this content takes space on your on your hard disk. And if you go back and say, I want to have it only in the cloud, perfect. Space is free and you can work. So with the storage sense group policies, you have the ability to clear your machine full automatically. So to see that, that's files on, on the cloud only, local available, always available. You see this stuff. Okay, coming to the next part. The next part is request files. You see that that's an animation part and you can have all these stuff uh, to do that. That's easy. Um, request files is a possibility to make an invitation to other people to give me some files I need for my work. Uh, so I split this request files part in three functions. Invitation, receiver, notification. Starting with an invitation. So I in my one drive for business. And I want to do that. That's therefore I create a, a folder. Means, sorry about that. The next thing for it, collection. Whatever you name, it's easy. I select this and then I press the request files button. So now you want to have uh, a header because the people has to know what's the project. Uh, the project name is Mr. One Drives Bot. Okay, if you are, can have German at one o'clock after this session, I have a German session with Mr. One Drives Bot. But here we are talking about the files we want to have from different person. So you can copy this link, but you can also leave it available. And we have to have the emails with the name. So I call it to France test and I do it with other. And you see it's outside my organization. That's an anonymous request. So you must be anonymous free. You have to access to anonymous that you can take this function request files. Otherwise, you have no chance. And then you write it down, please vote for the files, blah, 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 blah. That's a text that you, that Inviter has to be seen. Okay, looking for that. That's a perfect thing. Press the button to send. You do not have to open your Outlook or something. You can do it, but you do not have to do that. Perfect. So now we change the rule. I'm a receiver. I'm this front test and I receive an email. It says, okay, we need some message. That's Mr. One Drive and he, Hans, uh, want to have some files. Okay, I should need upload it. Upload files. You do not have access completely. He says, OK, that's there and I can select files. And if I press select files, I can have all these files upload, add more files and so on. You see the numbers on the, the, these files there. You have to be a name, a pre-name and a name because then they take it for the names uh, in two different ways. So that means there's a name there. I know because I have more than one people invited, then I know where it comes from. And the second one is if you have it also with the same name the next day and put again this equal file 02 bot ping, then we know it and it fills all the thing and says there's two or there's three. So we, we know that what's what's number in there. And I can take it upload, it's done, and it was successfully. So changing back to me as an inviter, I got a notification. I do not have to wait and I have to see that. I got a notification from Franz Test. Yeah, I got an invitation that one test has some new files uploaded. So I do not know, hey, I can do that and see the new files. That's a possibility. I got the same from other persons and you see, okay, that's the file Sabrina Fasu has done. And so I can also switch that. Means that will happen. All the files, people are not seeing each other. People can have the data there. And if you got an error, it will tell you what something is wrong. Here I uploaded a 20 gigabyte files to my OneDrive for business. You know, the restrictions are now, at these days, now it's end of May, uh, it's 15 gig in OneDrive personal or OneDrive consumer, uh, it's 100 gig, but the 100 gig function for a file 
inside OneDrive for Business and SharePoint is not available this time. Coronavirus make it not happen. So it was announced during Ignite 2019 in Orlando and we still have to wait. So therefore it could not be possible to, to upload a 20 gig file. Sorry about that, it doesn't work. So it works only in OneDrive for Business. Microsoft has not decided if it will be available. That has different things to say why, um, but this time it works only in OneDrive for Business. Second, you must be able to share to external users, anonymous users. I show you. If you see it in your Explorer like this, or in your web browser like this, create out, it's not available for you. You cannot have a request file because you must be from outside, only from internal. That means, yes, that is available, but not from external people. So it must be green or dark, and then you see, okay, I can work with them. This extra request file summary also has this expired date, although internal. You know, administrators can set the expiring date for the complete tenant from one to two, 730 days. 730 days means two years. So it was at the beginning 90 days, but the company has paid Microsoft. I have to ask Microsoft, we want to have it for more. I don't understand it because that means the link you create with external should be short that the people can react and then automatically close. You do not have to close it personal in person. No, it will be closed automatically. Though in my tenant, I say to my customers or to my employees, I say, okay, 60 days. And personally, I say, okay, 30 days or less. If you only need five files and we have spoken your Teams event and so on, I say, okay, send me this stuff and I will do that. And, oh, I will do that in a few seconds. Okay, perfectly. Give him a little try. If you have no time today, 10 days done. Uh, but these the administrator's days here is a little bit longer means you should also request that this request files also have this date in. So if the people do not work with you inside this date, you have to do it again. That's the thing. Time for access remains in the same as for all external access. You can change that if you want it. So I speak a little bit about OneDrive crew policies. You see, that's a lot of stuff. And uh, that's a normal OneDrive crew policies. I show you in the session later on. But we have to know, sorry, you have to know the, about the chloral sense. That means you have these stuff inside and you have to look what is inside these storage sense crew policies. Clean up my folder and so on. That's crew policies you can do without crew policies also in Windows. And we'll show you that now. So I have to go and present you. That means, yes, we can have this stuff in all settings. And you see in all settings, you have to say, OK, storage settings. And then you see what's happened. You have to be first on. That's a global switch. And that's all other people. And you have to see more categories and more things you have to do. That's not a group policy, but we can have these clone group policy. And that, therefore, it's possible. You see, there are some cleanup recommendations. Over 512 megabyte of storage on this device is available. So you have to think that we can do with group policies for the whole company. But it takes a little bit. And during my session in the evening, I will show you this one. OK, go ahead and show you my Explorer. That means, yes, what's inside in my things. And you see a lot of stuff. Uh, that means that's my company. That's my tenant. That's another tenant. Here you see that's a one try for business for another tenant. That's one drive for this tenant, one drive for business, sorry. And that's one drive personal. So this one is only one. You have it here in white and the other one in green, uh, in blue, not green. 
So inside these tenants, you have all the data there. That means inside Julian Versuch and Andrea has some uh, things in there means yes, that's a user and a combination of them to give me shared with me data. And you see, OK, always available. On the other hand, I have a lot of data here, there. That means we can look for the data and I have it in different ways. Uh, data on documents, it will all the years you want to show. I have digitized all my things from 2002 going up on documents and have it internal in my OneDrive and inside the SharePoint library. So on the other hand, you see there is also my one try for business here and you see that that in different states. So that means yes, for all these events like this event we have and OK, the PowerPoint is in front. OK, then you don't see that. Sorry about that. I can't change that. Let me look. Stop sharing, share. And I have to look for that. So now you must see it. Sorry about that. I have to repeat it very, very quick. All this stuff, that's all the things we have to see here. That's uh, the tenant here. And that's the other tenants. That's in this tenant, you have the shared with me data as I've shown you on the slide. And on the other hand, you see this is one try for business for this tenant. This is one try for business for this tenant. And here you see one drive personal. So therefore it, it's a different one. Going back to the slides. So they have some minutes and I want to think make some recommendations. You have to look for several things. If you want to look for uh, sync of stuff, you have to go and uh, see that's a MSTH community. There are always the most important features that OneDrive group announced. So you see if the roadmap's a different one, you have the sync up post and so on. That's the first one. The second one, I, I write some blog articles about different stuff and I do it in English and I do it in German. You have to be of the right ones that uh, it's a lot of work to write all these different things in different stuff. Sometimes I have to make the different pictures because the German ones, we do not say settings, we do say in in, in, in German, then you have to look for that. And the third one, you see, although the Office 365 roadmap, with you have to say in OneDrive, that means yes, in development we have 18 features rolling out, although 18 and 21 are launched. But keep in mind, the coronavirus, the COVID things, make some things happen that is not correct with the release date. Don't think about this release date that are current. It could be they are a little bit delayed. So the next session will come in a few minutes in a German session. That means, yes, you see Mr. OneDrive spot. I talk about this spot will run about all the knowledge for, from my perspective inside Teams, this one. And sometimes you also have a, we can have a request for a beta file because Mr. OneDrive spot, if you want to have it, you have make a picture that's a small form you can fill out the shortest time. I saw it from Microsoft himself in 15 seconds and then you are able and we will do it in the next few weeks and put it out Then you can test uh, the version I now have done. And although some things is there, if you have problems with your next generation sync client, with your OneDrive XE and, and you see you have to put it out and so on, it's a long time. I need now a complete hour to have all this stuff together. And therefore I ask to Microsoft, hey, why do you not save the current configuration of the sync client and put it there? And if the machine goes wrong, the heart is broken or something else, you can do it and say, OK, I want to save or want to restore these. That's easy part. OK, we will see, but you have to vote here for this. That's a recommendation about the current OneDrive configuration. 
If you want to have my slides, you also have to put this. Means in bit.ly m365 vm slash no dash hp01. And if you want to give me some feedback about, hey, you do not switch the perfect, I do not have to talk so good, you have to improve your English or whatever. Give the speaker feedback and also give the event users all the feedback what they do in the next year, in the next marathon, in the better way. Then you have also give them the two feedbacks. So my feedback now is that the second thing I have done and I have to start now a little bit with the core uh, thing with Mr. One Drive Bot and the other one. So that was it. That was it. Here are the credentials. Follow me on Twitter. And that was my session. And I have to look for the for the different names if something is there. And they have to look for that. Uh, don't see the screen in the shows. The power band is in front. Yes. No questions. Yeah, perfect. Then I have five minutes. I give you five minutes to prepare my next session. If there are no questions, I wish you a good day and I hope you will have other sessions although with different things. And I say Auf Wiedersehen from Deutschland. Auf Wiedersehen. I say goodbye from Germany. Thank you so much and uh, 